Ponsant is going to be talking this, to us about the top IT failures in history. I'll jump off. Welcome, Vincent. Thanks. Hi. Hi, all. Good to you. Good to be with you. You want me to start? Hello. Yeah. Should I take this for a yes? I can't hear you. Take it away. So okay, yeah. I go. Okay, Wait. so um, hi everyone. I'm I'm here for talking about top IT failures in history. Well, with a tweak, with a twist, as uh, you hear in uh, one second. So I'm a professor of strategy at M Lyon Business School, uh, one of the top uh, business schools in France. Uh, I've just uh, published a book, well, in French. As you can see, les 16 plus belles erreurs de la transformation numérique, the well, most beautiful, 16 most beautiful mistakes in uh, digital transformation. Uh, well, the, the top IT failures in history, that was the, the topic. I guess uh, it is not very difficult for you to find a list of the uh, top IT failures. Uh, you just uh, Google and, yeah, and you'll have a, a, a great, or well, perhaps great is not the, the best word, uh, of, the, of the failures. Uh, my favorite, my favorite, uh, it's uh, one of uh, it's it's a satellite launch uh, in the light, late 90s, a satellite launch around March uh, or on Mars, sorry, Mars uh, that crashed because because of what? Because two subsystems, uh, two subsystems couldn't communicate. One was devised by a European uh, company, another one was designed by an American company. The American company. Uh, and uh, the um, European company hadn't agreed on what uh, the units uh, should be uh, for communicating some acceleration, deceleration, when uh, at the moment of the re-entry in the atmosphere, and uh, well, basically one was calculating in meters and the other one was calculating in feet, and it, res it resulted in miscalculation and the satellite was lost and it cost, of course, millions and millions and millions of dollars. This one is almost um, anecdotal. Uh, I would like to tell you about something that is more dramatic. Um, I don't know if you have seen this picture. I don't know if you can figure out what it represents. I don't know. Well, I'll tell you. Um, this is um, a crash site and a few hours earlier uh, this is what you could see uh, in the sky it was the boeing 737 max from ethiopian airlines that crashed uh, right after takeoff uh, last year and uh, well two years ago and uh, this crash occurred uh, just months after a previous crash in asia eventually the death Toll for boats crashes was 346 people killed in those accidents. I would suspect this is the worst IT failure in recent history. Uh, I have uh, yeah little idea of uh, more uh, dramatic outcomes of a failure involving IT systems, software systems uh, in uh, in recent memory. So the cost was, of course, tens of billions of dollars. But uh, remember, 300 and almost 50 people killed in both crashes. Um, what was uh, the problem? You may, uh, you may have an idea. The 37, the Boeing 737, also called the 37, um, has been designed in the uh, late 50s, early 60s at a time when the, uh, the, the engines were very thin and could fit under the wings. And uh, this is the sixth or seventh evolution with much different, with very different engines that are much bigger and that have to be, uh, that, that have to be installed much ahead uh, of, the, of the wings, causing the plane to, um, causing the plane to, to go up. And for correcting this uh, glitch, this physical um, inconvenience, uh, Boeing had found the, the, the solution of installing a software patch 
that caused the uh, that caused the aircraft to go down. But the way uh, the uh, software was designed uh, had it take over against the will and the commands of the pilots. Uh, so eventually, it was the the software that uh, made the decision, and the decision that the software made was to have the plane go now nose down and to dive uh, down into um, into the earth. So this is to me the most terrible uh, crash, the most terrible failure in high T history. Okay, what can we learn? from uh, this and other stories of uh, IT failures. What can we learn? This is the question I would like to um, spend a few moments uh, with you on. And uh, more specifically, let's talk about the road to failure. Uh, failure um, is an outcome, and we want to know how such things happen. And I would like to propose you a couple of insights. First insight, strategic failures, IT failures, uh, uh, strategic failures, uh, including those coming from IT, are caused by strategic errors. This is uh, one of the outcomes of my research on various, um, uh, in, in various industries, uh, but it applies as well with IT failures. So the road to failure, let's talk about the road to failure. Failure is an outcome. Failure happens after a series of things. Uh, failure is really an outcome. It can't be changed. This is the result. And what we are interested in is the process that leads to failure. And the process for failure to happen uh, supposes that uh, at some point we have left the road uh, before, before, the, before the failure. And uh, before we really have left the road, we, we, we have done a small deviation. There has been a small deviation, and then the deviation became unchangeable and then failure. This is the road to failure, at least three very uh, separate steps that I would like to draw your attention on. We can find this process in a number of, uh, of occurrences while well, coming from my book, uh, Boeing, yes, crashes, death toll, uh, grounding, while well, the planes were grounded, recertified just uh, a few days ago, reputation was uh, damaged. Uh, I just don't mention the billions of dollars of losses. And what was the error? Well, a software patch was considered enough uh, to warranty product safety. And of course, there are many, many things around this, but uh, I'll develop a little later. Uh, other examples quickly, uh, the, 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 the very, uh, the, the uh, the name that uh, uh, personifies, um, uh, I mean, the distance, um, yeah, distance selling in France, La Redoute, uh, thought it was uh, okay to change uh, some things uh, when the internet came and uh, eventually it resulted in bankruptcy. A missed opportunity at Gillette, they ignored the trend and they continue to do business as usual and they miss the opportunity of, uh, of, of uh, selling uh, their razors and other wares online. It was uh, an opportunity that cost uh, hundreds of millions. Last example, very quickly, a, a, a mid-sized pharma in France that implemented an SAP system uh, in, yeah, in probably uh, too, uh, too, too fast and too quick. Um, uh, way and it resulted in product disruption, uh, the loss of uh, millions of dollars and uh, the and, and the loss of the trust from uh, patients, which is key, of course, for a pharma. So, first insights: uh, failures come from errors. Insight number two. Insight number two: strategic errors are made by the organization. Don't look after individual responsibilities. Who could you blame in the Boeing case? Who could you blame in all the cases I mentioned? You just can't blame uh, specifically one person, even one team, even one CEO. Well, the CEO generally they have to leave after the, uh, after the fact, but that's, uh, that's a, a minor casualty of, of those uh, failure. Strategic errors are made by the company. 
it is the it, it's not individuals that are um, uh, really uh, responsible for the uh, for the errors and the failures. Consider uh, rather consider this picture. Actually, I've pictured the road to failure as a very straightforward, a very uh, um, very easy road. Uh, currently, what companies face day in day out is a very uh, curvy road. Uh, foggy road, uh, and it's uh, difficult to uh, negotiate all the curves, all the more so that uh, the road is obscured and the road, while well, is shaken, well, I don't even mention COVID, which was perhaps uh, uh, the, 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 the most unpredictable thing that uh, happened over uh, in, the, in the last few years. Uh, but generally, we live, we operate, companies operate in an environment uh, that is, uh, uh, that is, uh, that is uh, volatile, that is uncertain, and consider something else. I mean, not only is the, 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 the road to success difficult to guess, to, uh, to appreciate, not only it is difficult to know where exactly to go, but uh, contrary to the, um, to, the, to the road metaphor or to the uh, car metaphor, in a company, several people, several teams are at the same time at the wheel, making errors inevitable, making errors inevitable. And this is insight number three. Flawless design, flawless execution aren't not, are not enough. Flawless design, flawless execution won't kill strategic errors. Uh, Boeing is a well-managed company. Uh, Volkswagen is a well-managed company. In both big companies, uh, IT fail big failures, uh, strategic failures were associated with IT systems. So uh, in a way, uh, the, 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 at Volkswagen, for example, the, 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 the design of the system that was uh, used to uh, to, to tweak and to cheat the pollution test, the, the design was perfect. The problem was problem was uh, elsewhere. So in um, in a good uh, system and specific, specifically in um, in uh, in platform systems, platforms that use APIs, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, there are very strict rules and very well carefully designed rules uh, for um, uh, separating partitioning. Uh, what is in the role of the platform, what is in the role of the uh, app developers, what is the role of the end users, and how, um, and how everything should be uh, working flawlessly. Actually, the point is that uh, communication is generally where, uh, well, in French, uh, the, the word is uh, le bas blesse. Uh, it, it, this is where it becomes difficult. Communication is permanent, communication is constant, and uh, it suffices uh, uh, sometimes a, a, a small miscommunication or a small gap in uh, communication protocols um, uh, generates a number of uh, outcomes that eventually uh, results in an IT failure. So this is essentially what uh, uh, we learned from uh, research on strategic errors, uh, in part uh, in IT, also enriched by insights from other, uh, uh, other uh, from research in other areas. And now you probably have this question: So what? So what? Well, this is the right question, of course. And perhaps if uh, you remember one slide or one insight uh, from this presentation, I would recommend it is, uh, well, not only this uh, Californian landscape, uh, but the, 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 the insight that comes with it. It is the duty of executives and managers to embrace strategic errors and IT-related strategic errors as a possibility, as an ever possible thing and to manage them as such. Really, if you want to remember just one slide, one sentence from uh, our exchange, please focus on that one. It's the duty of executives and managers to embrace strategic errors as a possibility and to manage them 
as such. Okay, let's go back to the uh, metaphor. We want to focus on this part. We want to focus on this small trajectory. We want to focus on this, on the moment when it is still possible to change things. This is what I call managing errors. Managing errors consists of uh, identifying the deviation and steering the organization back on track. Well, don't do it too fast because maybe you will bump into this car just uh, in front of us. Um, but uh, keep, this, uh, keep those images in mind, please. Okay, more concretely, recommendation number one. Institute and nurture a learning culture in your organization. What is learning culture? It's a framework for uh, analyzing teams and companies uh, developed by a colleague of mine from Harvard University, Amy Edmondson. You can find references in Harvard Business Review. And uh, learning culture combines two dimensions. The first dimension is uh, accountability of the people regarding towards the, uh, the, 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 uh, the strategy uh, of the um, of organization. Do people feel responsible in their own uh, activity of the global outcome of the project, the team, and perhaps the strategy even of the company? So accountability, personal accountability towards um, uh, the, the objectives of the organization. This is the first dimension. And uh, of course, this is low or high. It can be low or it can be high. And the second dimension is called psychological safety. It's a construct that has been really developed by Amy and Nonsen. And uh, psychology, like psychological safety in the context of a work team uh, represents the uh, perception that any team member can uh, speak their mind, can say, oh, something is wrong here. Because uh, you want to know that in, in all those um, uh, catastrophes I mentioned, somebody knew. There were people who knew. There were, it was not a secret. It was, or it was a secret polichinelle in French. I mean, it was a secret that everyone knew. So psychological safety is the ability of any member of the team to talk about things that um, that 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 things that can, that that don't go well, uh, talk about things that may constitute strategic errors or lead to strategic errors. It can be either high or low, and if we have a combination of low psychological safety and low uh, accountability, we have an apathetic culture. People just don't mind. This is often associated with the civil service, even though if it's not true. Uh, low psychological safety, low accountability is, uh, results in apathy. And of course, it won't warranty, it won't ensure that strategic errors won't happen. High psychological safety and low accountability, uh, it's the comfort zone. And uh, I would suspect that the Gillette uh, who totally missed the opportunities of e-commerce uh, a couple of years ago or 10 years ago, uh, they were in their comfort zone. Hey, everything is okay, the sky is blue, we make money, why bother? This is uh, e-commerce is no big deal for us. Okay, it's not good either, comfort zone is not good either for uh, avoiding strategic failure or for detecting strategic errors. If you have low psychological safety, and high accountability, you create anxiety. And what you want for, um, oh, uh, and what you want actually is uh, having a learning culture which combines high psychological safety and high accountability. And this is where uh, people can uh, pass on the messages that say, hey, uh, we are maybe doing a strategic error here, here. This is, this is the condition for uh, avoiding uh, strategic failures. This is the condition for uh, dealing with strategic errors. Recommendation number two, embed the culture in organizational processes. You know, it's, it's, uh, 
having a uh, learning culture is not only a matter of uh, being a nice boss, uh, uh, listening to people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. No, you want to have processes. You want to have processes that were struck um, by um, uh, the, 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 the tremendous um, uh, uh, improvements in flight safety. Well, apart from the Boeing thing, uh, but uh, over the past forty years, um, the airline industry as a whole has been doing a tremendous job reducing the, the, the number of casualties in civil aviation in proportions uh, that you just can't imagine, uh, that, that have no comparison with what, uh, uh, with the, with the, with what happens on the road. Uh, why? Because all airlines, or most airlines, most big airlines, have made it a priority. And among the processes that not only they have put in place, but enforce on a regular basis, they monitor any incident. They monitor any incident. Any pilot, any co-pilot, any steward, stewardess, uh, witnessing something that can put a flight in danger is supposed to, uh, to, to write a report, anonymous report generally, and then there is, there is an investigation. And, and this is by learning uh, through those processes that the airlines have done this tremendous job of improving the safety, uh, thanks to which we uh, fly without thinking twice. Recommendation number three, proactively manage strategic errors, IT or else. Uh, that comes from uh, my own research uh, that uh, I uh, kind of summarize uh, in a, um, a framework that I call the triple A error management framework. Actually, there is a prerequisite for the triple A framework. This is the prerequisite I was mentioning before. Error awareness. Errors can occur at all times. So if we are, if we as managers, we as executives know that errors can occur at all time, this is the prerequisite for correctly um, uh, managing strategic errors. The first A, the first step is assessing the error signals. This is spotting the weak signals that something could go wrong and that small something uh, that, um, uh, that is, that is yeah, bizarre uh, could lead to strategic outcomes, perhaps strategic failures. This is what assessing error signals is about. The second step, uh, the second A, refers to acknowledging errors. And in some cultures, it is extremely difficult to acknowledge errors because, because we all have in mind that errors are bad. Errors, living in error is, uh, um, uh, is, is, uh, is uh, incurring sanction, you know. Uh, the uh, being uh, living in the error in uh, religion uh, means uh, uh, being uh, be, means that it's possible uh, that you are sent to the bonfire because this is uh, witches living errors uh, in in uh, in religious error and we have those uh, yeah deep in our minds we have those uh, back thoughts. Meaning that when something is wrong, our first reflex is generally to say, well, it's not my fault. I've done everything well. But remember, it's the organization that makes an error. This is not one person in particular. Okay? So acknowledging errors, acknowledging errors from the organization should be a good practice for, uh, is good practice for managing errors and avoiding failures. And then acting on errors, well, it's almost obvious. Uh, and it, it is much easier when, um, when we have acknowledged errors. Then it fits back again to uh, a, uh, the awareness for errors and, of course, a correct assessment of error signals. So, and, it, and then it brings us in through a to nutshell, a, um, nutshell, us a virtual cycle. Can we, yeah, great. Do you want, we will, nutshell, we'll just get through. Strategic errors. Failure, strategic failures follow from errors. Please remember that. Strategic errors can always occur. Executives and managers must create a culture in which errors are managed and not punished.
that was my nutshell. That's fantastic. Um, uh, my apologies for like uh, uh, singing you off the stage there. The um, there are some questions for you. Uh, some people have wanted to. Uh, Medi, for example, has been has got a couple of ideas, um, but he's debating in the um, chat stage. So if it's possible after we've after you've jumped off here, if you're able to go to that uh, online stage and then be able to start sharing more of your thoughts, it's around, you know, like a risk management approach and how that feeds into the work that you've been presenting. Um, but for now, in order to keep the timing going, I do need to ask you to leave the stage now. But thanks so much for this thought provoking and fascinating insight into the longer term impacts of our IT and our API systems that we really need to um, incorporate into how we're thinking strategically and then also addressing how people uh, have a culture in, in the organization where they can raise these issues rather than be punished uh, for them. So th thanks so much. Thanks um, too.